All right, so today we are talking all about this brand new gimbal from Zhuwen. This is the Crane 2S. Now, at first glance, you might look at it and say this looks exactly like the classic Crane 2, which came out, what, was about three years ago, and it really revolutionized this kind of upright style handheld gimbal. But since then, they've been doing all kinds of innovations such as this Weeble S, personally one of my favorites for flying this EOS R, it's nice and compact. And then of course, there's this monster, the Crane 3S. I've used this to fly cinema cameras. When it comes to power, the Crane 2S lands somewhere right in between these two, and it's also priced at $599. Now, Zhuin is sponsoring this episode, so yep, you guessed it, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away two of these Crane 2S. S's. S's. All you got to do for a chance to win, drop a comment down below within the first 12 hours of this video going live and two of you lucky winners will receive one of these. Even though it looks just like the Crane 2, there's a whole lot new, so let's get into it. Now, the very first thing I thought when I saw this was I was surprised that this didn't have that beveled angle right here. It comes all the way up to here. But what's unique about this is that if you want that clearance, we can go ahead and make that modification with just a few screws. And once you do that, this column just pops right off and you can kind of just reconnect it down here. Then we just screw four back in. So now check it out we have the angle so if you have a camera that has a display back here you have that clearance now next big improvement is power so let's set this up with a heavier setup maybe the black magic pocket 6k with a cine lens let's go shoot Julio's the one that did the splits with uh, Alexa. With that, yeah, with the LF too. Some people messaged me thinking that I was mean. They're like, dude, I didn't know you could do the splits. Right, your That's turn. where I gotta get to. I'm telling you, dude, this is as low as I can go. I need yoga in my life. Yoga makes you a better filmmaker. Dude, you were like one of those bolt robots, those I was so smooth. Yeah. All right, Sam, your turn. Oh, Are you that proud of him? Up. No, that was pretty good. <laughs> I was just trying not to like shake. So Julio, you have a couple of Zhuin gimbals, right? Yeah, I actually have three of them. I have the Crane M, the Crane 2, and the Crane 3 Lab. But, like it's funny having all of those options. I still choose like the more nimble, smaller gimbal because it gets the job done. It is simpler in a way yeah. where it's just one tube that you hold on to and you could of course expand this out to have a second handle. And it feels pretty good and it's also just less cumbersome when yeah. it's set up it's just that that's the thing like i dig the other one but every time i'm holding it like this uh -huh. so i just get tired of holding this position this one i can like switch it back and forth like it's just easy and like i feel like that's what you need when you shoot most of the time is like you just want to go out and make content so oh, it's yeah. like the easier it is for me to actually get outside and freaking make content uh -huh. the more i'm likely going to go out and shoot something you switch between gimbal and tripod a lot for your shooting yeah dude that's the worst part right i know 100 well Check the worst part is trying to keep it perfectly balanced yeah so this is like one of my favorite Favorite features of this right is you have it balanced perfectly uh -huh. right you have a quick release and you attach your tripod plate right here and you just leave it on there it just mounts on sideways right there. yeah like that dude that's uh, great and you balance it with the plate on there so you don't have to take the plate on and yeah, off Yeah, that makes it so easy because then you go from here put on the zoom sticks come back throw it on and you're good to go yeah man and don't underestimate how awesome this feature is so check it out right now we're perfectly balanced there's just one latch right here and it starts to slide and then a safety release right there and we're off and since i leave that plate on there i can go ahead and snap it into my tripod we're already in tripod mode back to gimbal no problem we're gonna slide it back in lock it in perfectly balanced again how awesome is that this may seem like a small feature at first but once you have it it's one of those things that you just can't go back look we're on tripod mode bang and we are now ready to shoot back on the gimbal and we're balanced now here's another feature that i think is really cool it's getting more and more popular to shoot video vertically right for instagram or whatever but check this out right here. I can actually slide it on vertically as well as horizontally, tighten it down. Now I will need to rebalance it to this, but awesome. Look at that. You think your two's cool? Well, wait till you see this. Oh, <laughs> snaps. Yo, that's onto something right there. Yeah. Okay, this is pretty sick. <laughs> the fact that you don't have to put an L bracket that is just like built in and it's the same carriage that slides from the bottom to the side. Yeah. That's a good look. All 
I'm not a huge fan of shooting vertical content usually, but having it set up on this gimbal, it's actually really fun. The way you just compose your shots just completely change. And you can still get right up against somebody and still get their full body in the shot. Like, check it out, I'm only like, what, two feet from you or something? I'm getting your whole body. It's actually pretty cool. We could also go into vlog mode. Dude, vlog Yo. mode. It's actually not that heavy, to be honest. Look how wide that is. It's kind of crazy, isn't Oh no, it? dude, it looks amazing. First I was thinking, oh, well, why don't you just shoot horizontal and then just crop into the center. Yeah, but then, but you, then you lose you... so much resolution. Though. Exactly, but once you see it like this, it's like, oh yeah, this is actually nice filming vertical. Yeah, dude, this is great. Yeah. to actually get some shots that came out pretty good. I am shocked. Do it one-handed, let's see what you got. Yeah. Oh, all right, so now we've had a chance to shoot all day with this camera, and one thing that's really impressive is that we're still on the first set of batteries and we're still only about halfway through it. Now let's take a look inside. We have three 18650 batteries. Love these, they're really powerful. They're also very inexpensive. And they claim 12 hours of battery life. So check out this setup that we're working with, C300 Mark III. Of course, we stripped it down a little bit. We put a nice little lens on here and we also put in the smaller battery. And with this setup here, Look at that, we actually have the clearance we need. We also offset this monitor here so that we can go into underslung mode and still have clearance. And technically the right way to go underslung mode is actually to go to the right here, but with the setup, you can see that there's not enough clearance right there. But what we've been doing instead is just going straight down like that. And the motor stops right there. So even if I'm holding it like this, it doesn't really interfere with the lens too much. So it hasn't been too much of an issue. And I love just being able to do this transition like that. 665, 666. And I'm actually shocked at how not crazy heavy this is. 667. To be honest, dude, I was super nervous when you first handed it to me. But then when you gave it to me, I'm like, oh, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I was holding it with my left hand, which is my weak hand. Yeah. As you could tell, my noodle arm. Honestly, it's not a bad setup here. What do you think, Steven? I think. Now that we've been using this all day today, there's a few things I love. One is being able to lock all three axes now. And I love this because in between shots, I can lock all the axes and just kind of carry it around like this. I don't have to worry about it swinging around, whacking me in the head. And of course you have your typical modes like follow where it's kind of your majestic mode, your pan follow where your pan follows with you, but your tilt stays locked off. And this has actually been a pretty useful mode, especially going from low to high. And you just adjust your tilt with this joystick here. Or another thing I love about these Zhuang gimbals is that you can actually grab the camera, force it to go up and it stays there. Turn down, boom, stays there. We also have our POV modes and go mode. Then there's some way to get this into Vortex. Ah, there we go. Ooh, this is a shot we need to try. One of my original complaints about the Crane 2 was that I didn't really love the feel out of it, out of the box. I had to go into this kind of complicated app, but Zhuang's done some major improvements there because now out of the box settings, it feels so good. It does exactly what I expected to do and wanted to do, and I don't plan on really changing the settings. But if you do want to adjust those settings, you could do it right here. You don't have to figure out any sort of complicated app or anything. You can adjust your speed, smooth, dead band, all that good stuff. All right, now let's talk about some now let's talk about some accessories. I actually think that's kind of dramatic. Steve, could you just like shake this tree? We have the dual handle grip, which I actually like because then you can hold it like this. More leaves. This is a good system right here, but also Small Rig is making some accessories for this. Did I say stop? There's no more leaves falling. <laughs> You're not shaking hard enough. Put some muscle into it. I need this to be dramatic. I like how there's Sam's even covered in leaves right now. Small Rig also has some accessories 
where you attach a grip on both sides. And okay, now you can just, I think that's enough tree shaking. Juan also made a new and improved follow focus that I have attached right here. I do like how it's just plug and play. It's just a matter of setting it up and plugging it in and works pretty much right away. It corresponds with this wheel right here. So I can actually hold it like this pretty comfortably, have focus control with my thumb. Dude, I'm trying to get B-roll. Huh? I'm what? trying to get B-roll. <laughs> Oh my god. I think it's my phone. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and of course, just like the previous versions, Juin has this little transmitter right here. It's battery powered also. So if you're just doing a quick little shoot, you can just slap this on top of a DSLR or mirrorless camera and you have this tiny little wireless video transmitter on there. Now this transmitter is not gonna be as good as something like a Teradek, but let's just look at the convenience of this thing. It's battery powered right now. So all I have to do is just plug in an HDMI into this thing. Oh, and there's our feed right there. And right now we're in the middle of a heat wave. So I think I'm just gonna hang out in here and have Steve do all the work. Steve, keep up the great work. Not bad for a teeny little device, huh? Now, Zhuin did tell me that I really should be using this lens support as much as possible. It's just gonna be a more secure lock of the camera on the gimbal because most small cameras in this Blackmagic Pocket only has one quarter inch back here. So sometimes your lens can start to shift, which can cause vibrations. So by setting in this lens support, it's really gonna help secure the camera down and give it a second point of contact. And you're just gonna run into less issues this way plus it's safer once you get all this sorted out next thing you're going to want to do is run the auto tune which is really convenient we no longer have to manually enter any of those parameters we just hit the auto tune and the camera's going to do this crazy dance where it bounces all over the place which is essentially the gimbal figuring out how much this camera weighs they really took their classic crane 2 and took everything they learned from the last couple years of innovating new gimbals and they put it right into here everything from this quick release to this vertical mount all the way down to this carbon fiber grip which feels feels really nice. Now I've been using this in that beveled mode so that I have clearance for this monitor back here, but some of you may want to just leave it right back up here in that 90 degree angle. Juin told me that in that mode, it's simpler for the gimbal to stabilize the camera because this back here is only responsible for your roll. And then this one's only responsible for your tilt. And this one's only responsible for your pan. So it's just simpler for the gimbal. And in very few cases, it may be smoother. But like I said, I've been running it in this bevel mode this whole time, haven't had any issues. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it in this mode personally, but if you know you're only gonna be using something with a flip out screen where that motor won't get in the way, then I'd say just leave it in that mode. Anyway, should we wrap this up by reading a few comments from my last video, which was all about the Canon C300 Mark III, the one we flew on this Crane 2S. Top comment is from Veritasium. Thanks for shooting with me. The grade was easy and colors look great. Let me know when you wanna do some science on this channel. Yeah, sure, let's do it. This week will be about the Crane 2S. Next week will be about how photons work. Bruce says, how many cameras does it take to make a YouTube video? I don't know, I'm still counting. Yeah, I plan on putting a camera in every single crack and corner of this studio. So whenever I start recording, I just run around the room, hit record on everything, and then just have every angle imaginable. I wonder if when you first held the C300 in your hand, she whispered in your ear, crater <laughs> i know i've been a canon guy for so long but when it comes to mirrorless camera that a7s3 oh it's too good it's too good i have to switch i do still love the canon cinema lineup but i am doing a little comparison video with the c300 versus fx9 so let me know in the comments what you want me to test out between the two